Along the upper Mississippi, every hour brings something new. There are crowds of odd islands, bluffs, prairies, hills, woods, and villages. Everything one could desire. Mark Twain. Mississippi River National Wildlife and Fish Refuge is one of the largest blocks of floodplain habitat in the continental United States. It's just a phenomenal place. The total is about 261 miles, about 240,000 acres. Just a phenomenal refuge all the way up and down. PremiumMeat.com Since its establishment in 1924, the refuge has encouraged and sustained wild beauty with lush floodplain forests and wetlands vital to breeding and migrating wildlife. The river moves from land to water to land, in and out of organisms, reminding us what native peoples have never forgotten, that you cannot separate the land from the water, or the people from the land. Lynn Knoll. The refuge has experienced changes, though, because of human influence and natural processes. It's our mission, along with our partners, to conserve and manage this internationally significant ecosystem for future generations of wildlife and humans. I climbed up to the top of one of the many bluffs around the river. It was like being on top of the world. I mean, everything was so small, even the trains. But you know, I got a really good look at how huge and long the river really is. Well, the thing that struck me the most was the mix of wildness and industry. There's nothing but nature for miles and miles. And then around the next river bend are factories and towns. It's kind of weird seeing thousands of tundra swan floating in the water with a huge barge going by in the background, but there seems to be a delicate balance here. Indeed, the river is a perpetual gallery and boasts each month a new world, Ralph Waldo Emerson.
Rivers run through our history and folklore. They nourish and refresh us and provide a home for dazzling varieties of fish and wildlife and trees and plants of every sort. Oh man, there's nothing like putting your boat in at dawn and waiting for that first jerk on your line. It's the best. You know, being in a small boat taking pictures of the pelicans on the seed islands is absolutely incredible. I, I remember anchoring our boat once and we were waiting for the waves to die down and I noticed all the little bugs skittering across this carpet of duckweed floating in the water. More and more bugs seemed to appear, and they had their own little floating world in a huge backwater area. I had never seen a bald eagle in the wild before, and I just kept staring at this one majestic bird. But as I kept walking by the river's edge, I was seeing a bald eagle almost every minute. It was awesome. These are some of the most scenic trails I've ever been on. The river, the bluffs, the woods, the wetlands, it's all here. The Upper Mississippi River National Wildlife and Fish Refuge is full of scenic beauty and wild character. It is one of the last remaining contiguous corridors of fish and wildlife habitat in mid-America. You can play here, relax here, be here. The rivers are our brothers and yours, and you must henceforth give the rivers the kindness you would give any brother. Chief Seattle. Chief of the Sequamis. Yeah, look at, they're working us right now. It is not enough to love the refuge. It's a living thing and needs conservation, management, and sometimes restoration. This kind of care makes it possible for fish, wildlife, and plants to have a safe place to thrive and continue the Mississippi River's cycle of life. It's a place where I can get away from the loud, busy, and anxious world and just relax with nature. When I'm on the refuge, I feel a wonderful sense of calm. I love this place because it gives me hope. Hope for all the other refuges on Earth. You know, when we take care of the land and the animals that depend on it, they will take care of us. A river is the coziest of friends. You must love it and live with it before you can know it. Experience the refuge in many different ways. Get to know and understand its rhythms and patterns. Help care for the refuge. The care of rivers is not a question of rivers, but of the human heart 